um, I, uh, even though most of my family are from Russia, I grew up mostly in the UK, which is why I sound like this. And you probably know that our national sport in the UK is, is not skating or hockey, it's drinking. And we start very young. And so when I was 13 years old, I'd like dreamed about, it took me a super long time to figure out I was queer. <laughs> I was having a conversation with my mum last time she came to stay because we were kind of talking about trans people and, you know, she's of this generation. I was trying to explain that, like, even if, some, even if you know something exists, you might not know it was for you. And I was like, sorry, mum, you might not want to hear this, but I was literally having sex with women and I still thought I was straight. Um, it's the only time I've ever talked about sex with my mum and will be. Um, anyway, so I still thought I was straight. And, but I daydreamed about kissing boys. Oh my God, so much. I like, thought about it so much and I had crushes all the time. And, and I just was like, I knew like, what it was going to be like, that it was going to feel like, you know, somewhere in between like going over a roller coaster and also like the way that it feels in your brain when you have a really good Cadbury's cream egg. And, um, <laughs> And, uh, and so I was super excited, and then I was going to this thing with my best friend Lucy, who coincidentally lives down the street from me in Toronto now, and, um, and it was called the Heron Billet, so it's a pub in Blackheath where I lived, which is like a big expanse of grass, and basically all the teenagers who couldn't get into the pub would go and like get served, I was... Just, I was getting served from the age of 13 because I think they really didn't care. I was like, it's because I look so, it's because I'm wearing a leather jacket. But no, they just <laughs> wanted money and there wasn't a heavy police presence. So we would go and buy like super tenants, which is 13% beer, and then get drunk. And then everyone would just make it out, which in my country we call getting off, like getting off with each other. So getting off with someone just means kissing with tongues. Like that's it, you know, maybe a little bit of groping, but mostly it's just the kissing with tongues. Anyway, so I'd never got off with anyone. I'd like been wanting to get off with someone so much and then Lucy was like oh you've got to come to Heron Billet because everybody just gets off with each other there and I was like oh my god and um <laughs> And so I went and there was this boy called Danny who had a bike and he wouldn't let me ride his bike, uh, red flag. But he, anyway, he, but he was just like, no, no. And then just somehow we sort of, you know, our faces fell onto each other. You know, this moment that I'd been building up to for like literally years. And all I could think was like, this is it? <laughs> like the bit in Sarah's story where she was like, oh yeah, I have to do something too. I never, I never had that realization. <laughs> It took me literally months of knowing, it's very tongue kissy in my country, um, it took me literally months of realising that I also had to use my tongue. It was just a lot of kind of, you know, I'm not going to act it out for you, but you can imagine. Um, anyway, so, so then half an hour later, Danny and his bike have gone, and I don't really know, like, I didn't know how many people you're supposed to kiss. Like, I had no idea. I just thought it was like all-you-can-eat buffet. Like, you just as many as you can... <laughs> And so then this other guy who we knew as ACDC John um, <laughs> came up and then he like went to kiss me and I, I don't think I even fancied him. I was just like, sure, why not? This, you know, I'm in now. And so we were getting off with each other and then <laughs> he said, do you want to wank me off? <laughs> to which I answered, not particularly. <laughs> So then that's over and then people start to disperse and there's maybe eight of us left and it's me and Lucy, my best friend, and then um, Lee Harris, who's a friend from school's brother. The friend from school wasn't yet hanging out with him, cooler than her. I was like super uncool up until this point. This is like the thing that made me so... I was always like in the dweebiest group at school, but just because I had a cool best friend from outside school, somehow this happened to me. And a very permissive mum. Um, anyway, um, so Lee Harris was there with his friends and then Lucy was like, listen... Lee's friend Robert's never got off with anyone. He really wants to get off with you, really get off with him. And this was like very much, you know, subsequently a thing we did. And the boys did too. We were like equal opportunity sluts. Um, <laughs> the, the, you know, if someone was like, this person really wants to get off with you. And Lucy had a boyfriend, so she couldn't. And I was like, oh no, I already got off with two people. And she's like, come on, he really wants to. He's never got off with anyone. So eventually I was like, okay. So then, you know, word gets back to Robert. These are all their real names, by the way. <laughs> So word gets back to Robert and he like siphons me off from the group. So we're siphoned off. It's like, I don't know, midnight in Blackheath. Um, I was out with my big brother who God knows where he was, but somehow my mum thought that meant that I was being taken care of. And so Robert pushes me off to the side and we sit on this kind of low wall and he goes, how many people have you got off with? And I thought, oh my God, I can't tell him it's only two, like ever. And so again, not knowing the rules, I went, what, tonight? <laughs> And he, in retrospect, also clearly did not know the rules, but went, yeah. And I went, oh, 
only two. <laughs> and he goes, I've never got off with anyone. And I said, haven't you? And he goes, no, until now. <laughs> you never forget your third. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs>